What's going on? It's your boy Jared, better known as Prominent Ja on social media networks. I'm an award-winning award-winning producer for Campsite Studios and an entrepreneur influencer. Today I have somebody that has dealt with a lot of trials and tribulations, but managed to do big things in his own community. I'm here with my homie, my bro, Ba. What's going on? What's up, my boy? What's going on, bro? How you doing, man? Appreciate you coming out, bro. This is amazing, man. I'm happy I got you on here, man. As you can see, we got some festivities here. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna start off the show right. You know, we got what's this right here? It's some um gong. Dong, what is that like? What type this of? This is um, aphrodisiacs I sell here also. Aphrodisiacs? Um, oh, yeah. so basically for the women and the fellas to get right. Yeah. I feel you, I feel you. I got um, unisex ones. I got um, male and female. Word? Yeah, but this right here is gone. It's just straight for males. Damn. So how'd you even, before you even jump into that? So let's take a shot at this first. We're going to get right mm. with this and see how this go. Dong, that's what it's called right here. Gong right here. It's all fermented roots and herbs. It's good for your body. So besides being an aphrodisiac, it's good for your body. Good for your immune system. Your immune good system. Your blood. You know what I'm saying? Make sure y'all take care of your immune system. Cheers. Just throw it straight back. <sighs> Woo! Kind of like a spicy hit to it. Right. That remind me of... <clears throat> that remind me of like, uh, that Mama Wanda Mama Wanda shit. From DR, yeah, that shit tastes just like that. It's like just like in the same family as Tiger Bomb. Got you, and I know Tiger Bomb is <clears throat> Aphrodisiac too. Yes, it is. Got you, got you, bro. To get right into it. So, how did you even get started with this? How did you get into the whole bar movement, and what made you open in the community? Um, so first, I'm gonna start by saying, um, my name is Balshawn Ball for short. If you don't know me, mm-hmm. now you do. But um, I like helping people. Uh, so um, my main objective to open up a juice bar was these shots right here. If you ever been to the juice bars uptown in Harlem, they're like the only juice bars that carry it. And me being young, I've been going there, taking these shots since um, we came home when I was like 23, 22. Mm-hmm. I've been going up there, taking these shots. And I just somebody put you on to the shots, or yeah, you just like um, I gotta go. Older, there. older guys from my neighborhood. Oh, where? Tell actually. people where you're from. Let people know, cause yeah. Forty Projects. You're from Southside. From Southside, Forty Projects. Um, a lot of people familiar with it. If you don't know, um, you get to know. <laughs> I'm saying, yeah, it's not the best place. You know what I'm saying, but um, you can make good out of it, like myself. Exactly. And we gonna I'm dive all into that, bro. That's for We're sure. We get into all of that. I'll show you where I came from. But I'll tell you where I came from, how I got here, mm-hmm. everything. That's but how I started the juice bar was, I actually never thought that they'd give me the mix. When I saw them, when I went up there and noticed, I said, oh, I could start this in Queens. Mm. But I didn't think they would give me the mix. So the shit was so good, you was like, y'all gotta fuck with this shit back, yeah, bring this back to the to, to mm-hmm. a point where I used to bring girls up there, my friends. <laughs> and all of us started drinking it. You know? I mean, some girls liked it, some damn, but most of my friends liked it. Uh, um... A girl from Harlem I met, mm-hmm. and she actually was like, "Yo, why you don't? If you don't got any kids, why you don't try to open up a juice bar Word. in Queens?" I was like, "Yo, I was thinking of it, but I don't think they'd give me the mix." Uh huh. Because it was funny. Because one time she, um, like I told you, it was an aphrodisiac. I'm gonna tell you a little story. <laughs> really. I hate this story. So remember, it's female shots and then it's male shots. Remember, I know about it because I've been going there since I was like 22, 23. Yeah. So when I met her, uh-huh. she went inside one of the juice bars uh-huh. and brought two shots up. So, okay, she was like, so you want to like, try one with me? Okay. No, that's not what happened. <laughs> so, so I'm like, yo, what's that? Uh-huh. And we all knew what it was already. Yeah. I was just trying to know what flavor it was. Yeah, see what. Uh-huh. Right? So I'm like, yo, what's that? She's like, yo, um, nah, it's, it's little shots. Mm. Let me go for you. Uh, it's on the third. So I'm like, what is it? What kind of shots is it? Like, yeah. friends of her, like, her thinking, I don't know what it is, uh-huh. right? Meanwhile, yeah, I'm taking this all the time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So um, she said it was um, a pussy purr. A pussy purr? Yeah, pussy purr. For real? Yeah. So they got. Yeah, y'all ladies better, y'all better yeah. get into this shit right Different now. Different name, bro. <laughs> So, I'm like, oh, I could take one of those? <laughs> right? Mind you, it's mm-hmm. female shots. So yeah. I know that's a female mm-hmm. shot. She's like, yeah. I'm like, yo, you ain't get one for me? She's like, yeah, yeah, this is for you. Uh-huh. 
So I'm like, in my head, I'm like, like I'm not taking this shit. This is not for me. You're lying. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Hey, this for you. We got both of them for you. Uh -huh. But anyway, long story short, that went on for about a month. And then I told her I knew what they was. Yeah. So the whole time she was lying to me, like, nah, that's for you. It wasn't for me. Yeah, <laughs> you know, she was trying to do that. Yeah, <laughs> she was, she was but, trying um, to do that. Anyway, so actually I went one day and I asked him, hey, yo, was y'all teaching me a mix? I was like, yo, yeah, this is, I'm, I'm 27 now. This one I was about 26, 25 mm -hmm. maybe. Mm -hmm. I was like, yo, yeah, we teach you it. And then you're all in Queens. So after that, I just started looking for a spot. Um, I went through... Yeah, how did you shop for the spot? Yeah, how did you shop for the spot? How did you find, like, did you say in your head, like, I'm open one in Queens, I know exactly where, or you went shopping around? Um, I went shopping around. Okay. Um, like I said, from Southside. Yeah. So I didn't want to put one in Southside. Mm, yeah, you know how that goes. Because it was more so of me, like, I, if I put it in Southside, only Southside people is going to go there. Mm. You know what I mean? If I put it somewhere else, I'll have my Southside people that I know. Places. So how did yeah? So you just went on so, the search. I just went on the search. Uh -huh. Like a like a turkey with his head chopped off. <laughs> like a chicken with his head chopped off. Um, yeah. Have you ever I had any, like? Have you ever done look for like a commercial? You didn't even know how to go about it. You just no, said I'm I gonna just, go find me a spot. I said I'm gonna go find me a spot. Look, I went around looking for for rent signs. Word. And by yourself, by myself, That's what's up. That's what's up. That's the hustle Dolan. right there. We'll like, fuck it. I'm gonna make yo. this shit happen. My, if I gotta do it myself, I'm gonna yep. go out and really look for a spot where I can rent. Yep. So yeah, tell us how you know continue exactly that story. Right so now, um, my first spot I found was on Linden in like two twenty eighth or twenty seventh. Mm. -hmm. Linden, like right. Ne yeah, it's like right next to the um conduit. So yeah. I yeah, felt yeah. like that was a good location because it was right next to Elmont. It was in Lowerton. Or Cambridge, rather. Yeah, it's a neutral um, area. Right. So, I gave the broker I met. He what he made me do was, this is the first thing I went through. I'm talking about this is the first spot I found everything. I yeah. Or something. So, I got the spot. He told me the broker told me, yo, hurry up, get all the paperwork mm -hmm. in with this address. Yeah. So we could show the owner. And he definitely give you the building. Okay, you know, to give you the, the price building. on the number, exactly. Mm -hmm. Once he you got your paperwork, he said I was gonna get um, the building regardless. Oh, okay. So I put all my paperwork in uh -huh. to get the building. Yeah. Had the address there and everything. Mm -hmm. Next thing you know, I got in contact with the broker. Showed him the broker told me um, some other people got in contact with the owner. Oh, I'll bid you. Not even I'll bid me. Just got in contact with the owner directly and the owner gave it to somebody else. Oh, went around, went around the realtor and went yes. directly to the owner, and that's right. what happens. That's that's just business, you know. Yes, realtors will take what comes. So that through. was my first mistake. That was the first part mm -hmm. of business that I learned. Got you. Know you. I mean? Go right to the source. Don't go, you know. Don't deal yes. with the third party. Sometimes right. you gotta go right to the source. Makes sense. So I was so mad, aggravated. Mm -hmm. That same day, I just went around looking, 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 looking. Still didn't find a spot. Within that week, I looked at probably 20 different places. 20? All in Queens? All in Queens. Different parts of Queens, too. No, all on this side all of Queens. All on the side of Queens. All on the side of Queens. Right. Um, from Cambridge. I'm about to say, don't go to the Rock. That shit too far. Yeah, <laughs> that shit too far for everybody. You know what I'm saying? My um, side of the temperature. Everywhere from Lower Town uh, to Queens Village. Yeah. To Bayside. Okay. Everywhere so, Queens base, pretty like up, like, you everywhere know. Everywhere Queens base. Beside the, yeah, the B side. All right. Um, once that happened, I sort of kind of still didn't find a place, mm. but I found another realtor. Got you. He was just, I met him and it was good that I met him. Yeah. Because even at a point where I was just like, fuck it, I'm mm -hmm. just, you know what, fuck this shit. Yeah. He was still calling me. He was keeping you, he was, he was persistent, like, yo, we're going to find something, we're going to find something. Yes. Uh, every week, every other month, he was calling me. So from May, to October, no, May to September. Yes, 2019. May to September. So from May to September. And that's about six months almost searching. Right. Searching. He was calling me, I was going to look at places. Summertime, I was going out, I was getting tired of looking at places, everything. Yeah. But I still wanted to do it, but then it was so much, uh, you know what? If I don't find a way out like, mm -hmm. I'm gonna go into real estate. Got you, got you, okay. You know what I mean? But um, then I met somebody and they was like, yo, 
Nah, get your juice bar if that's what you really want. And then you use that money to get into real estate. Yeah, you know, you know what I mean? find a way to fund your other your right. other endeavors, which is get, start the first business you thought of, and then you could build on that and right. get another business. That makes sense. So now, what happened on top of that was, so now I found this spot. September. It took Sept- me to November, though, to find the, sign a lease. So he hit you up September, like, y'all found a spot in Queens. Yes, and I then came, November, yeah. you came, like, I'm going to fill out the paperwork and did yeah, the same I thing. I came in September, looked mm-hmm. at the spot, recorded it, seen everything I could do, brung somebody here, mm-hmm. see what was wrong with the building, everything. Mm-hmm. Um, how'd you go about that, though? Like, how'd you even, like, you got the spot, you signed the lease, all right, it's my spot. Like, I'm sure, because you did this, this, this right here, the architecture is real nice, so, like, how did you decide, like, boom, I got the spot, now I'm going to go in and gut this shit out and put what I need to put to make it look like a good establishment? Um, I just knew my plan. I knew what I, once I saw the spot, mm. once I saw the place, rather, I knew what I wanted. I didn't mm. have, like, a real plan. Mm, just went with it. Like, I know I want it, I'm going to do it, and that's and then I'm going to figure things out on the, on the way. That's and that's I how was. you jumped into it. That's that's, that's a risk, bro. Like, a lot that's of people were scared risk. to take that. That's a real risk, bro. Risk. Like, to even think about... I, I'm gonna do this. I found property. I'm gonna just buy into it, and regardless of the, what what the turnout is, I'm gonna mm-hmm. still do it. You know right. what I'm saying? And, and like I said, who who did the like the whole arrangement, the the architecture of the spot? Um, I actually got a company to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, they did a great job. I'm I'm the shop, the shop is the name. shop is dope. I'm not gonna lie, it's a real nice shop. TVs everywhere. Nice countertops, everything nice and clean and sanitized. Or he even got the hand sanitizer when you walk in, he making sure. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because the whole COVID thing happened yes. while, you know, you signed at least 2019, November, and then 2020 coming around, you're going to open up 2020. And then we get hit with COVID. Right. So, like, so how did you I, go about dealing with that situation um, and opening doors still? For me, it was actually a learning experience. So it was good because if COVID didn't happen, I feel like I would have opened up. I had to put so much into the store. Guys, you got you here. Probably could have lost money. A lot of money, right? Um, things like that. So me having COVID, it was a learning experience. Mm-hmm. I was able to open a store, um, and I was able to take more of a slow time, even though I wasn't making money. Mm-hmm. I was able to take my time on. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah. Get things a little more open. Learn the process. Like, Learn all right, process, I'm going to see right. how this is going to work out. Um, I was able to open up during the um, pandemic, um, learn how to use my blenders. Got you. Um, so you self-taught yourself everything? Self-taught myself everything. I went around, I looked the best ways I could ju- juice things. Mm-hmm. Um, so I doing research things. about like juice bars and stuff. I researched things, I researched fruits. Mm-hmm. All in within a year and a half. I Damn. That. So that's a lot of ground. Like that's that's doing different things. Like to be to open your own spot and then to try to learn and self teach yourself all this stuff. How would you like in terms of the obstacles you had to deal with? I'm sure while you was learning these things, you had to deal with life obstacles. How was yeah. that? How was you able to do that and still open your shop? How was you able to manage that mentally and physically? Um, mentally and physically tough because. Um, when I came home, I was still like a target to the cops. For mm-hmm. some reason, I don't know. Um, how long? How long did you? How long did you incarcerate? Did two and a half years. Two and a half years in jail, um, Rikers Island. I you say that changed your life? Yeah, it did change my life because it made me smarter. It made me actually know what I want out of life. It made me um, think more. Think more for yourself and how right. you going? How, and what you going to do when you get out? Right. When you came out, you was like set on stone, like I'm gonna make a business, or you was like, see, I knew, I know I wanted a business. I know mm-hmm. I wanted to do From something. start, you wasn't going to work for nobody. Like, yeah, it's like, first, I got into stock. Stocks, yeah, I'm in that shit right now. Stocks you know is, saying? you know, up and um, down. <laughs> but that's, that was just something I just wanted to try. Me opening a business, something I really wanted to do. Um, like I said, because, and like I said in the beginning, I like to help people. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's so, your foundation, helping people. Right, so... And that's why also I said I'm gonna open up a juice bar. Mm. And then that's why I also said I'm not gonna just open up a juice bar. I'm gonna open up a juice bar where I could cater to everybody. Mm. Where I could sell salads, mm. juices, smoothies. So um, you got the breakfast, bowls, the bagels, and everything got as well. Bagels, uh-huh. coffee. Um, you got the you got the the aphrodisiac shots the aphrodisiac, on deck. You know what I'm saying? You, know, you got a mixture of everything here. It's not just have a game room. Mm-hmm. 
and um, side of the juice bar. Yeah. You know, I could cater to everybody, you know what I'm saying? And I always said that when I open up my business, I'm going to have a business where everybody could just walk in there and be comfortable and happy. Yeah, that, that's, I mean, you create an environment like that. It's a big space. You got a big space in the back. Like you said, you got the video game set up. One of the things I found dope about your spot, being that you got in Queens, is I noticed that you named all the, all the smoothies after neighborhoods in Queens. How did you come up with that whole concept? Um, I know a lot of people in Queens. <laughs> in Queens, nigga. That's what yeah, it is. Like in Queens, so, nigga. <laughs> um, I love Queens. Yeah, I'm a um, queen. Yeah, Queens all day. Big Queens. So, I know people in like every part of Queens. Yeah. So Especially you going to school, you went to John Bound, you went, went to Van Buren, you met Van. at Van Buren. I went to school, PS40 Elementary, then I went to 118 in the North, mm. um, then got suspended to 192, which is across the street. So you know all about and Queens. I went to, from suspended to 72, high school got suspended to August Martin. He went to John, hold on, he went to John, hold on, he went to John Bound, August Martin after Van. Um, I was in, actually, I'm lying to you, I was in junior high school uh -huh. and got suspended. I was in ISA and got suspended. ISA, oh yeah. they sent me to um, August and <laughs> Yo, he was on that type of time? That's different. Nah, nah, I mean, you could say it yourself, like, I mean, we, we knew each other from Van, like, we was different. I feel like everybody was different at that time. We was young, we was hungry, we was out here chasing girls, we was living life, you know what I'm saying, right. living for the moment. I mean, we did dumb shit, uh, we had fun. I remember I just recounted one time, lunchroom, lunch, lunchroom antics, and I remember one time on the Ave, I know one thing I know about Bar, he don't play that shit, like, you disrespect him, he's a problem, you know what I'm saying, that's just how everybody moves, you disrespect him, it's a problem. Right. I remember we was on the Ave one time, some grown ass man, I forgot, he was probably, we was like 16, 15 at the time. <laughs> King, he was, he was right in front of Burger King. Homie was over here angry, just angry, like, yo, just trying to cause a scene, getting disrespectful. We all outside Burger King, he's chopping at the mouth. All of a sudden, I know he started coming in your face with AK, Tom, we were everybody at this time. And the next you know, like I said, you want to take him on the block? <laughs> bro, I was with the shits, bro. He was like, yo, what's good? Let's just say, you know what I'm saying? We took care of that, and that was that. But like I'm saying, it's a live and learn experience. You know what I'm saying? You do, you do dumb shit when you're young, but you grow, you learn how to evolve and do better. Yeah, you know we done did a lot of dumb, rambunctious things when we were young. Yeah, that's, like, I mean, it's a live and learn, ex it's a live and learn but, experience. But um, when we were young, we felt like certain things was having fun when we grew up now. And mm -hmm. look at him, he's recording. He have a podcast, me, I have a juice ball. Yeah, we working. Um, we all doing things, you know what I mean? Um, you grow and you learn. That's a fact. There's and nothing wrong with that. And I saw that you also, like, this past week, we were supposed to do this interview a while back, but I had to pass on my mom's or whatever, you know, RP my mom, but we were supposed to do this a while yeah, back, yeah. and um, I saw that this weekend you had um, a Von DMC hit. Right. How did that, how was that experience? Like, was that out of the blue? Did it hit you up? Or, like, they was just on the block, and he was like, oh, shit, Von DMC over there, and it's showing love to Jam Master J tribute over there. So how did that play out? Um, so what happened was, they with Run DMC was actually on a corner at the mural. They were doing something for Adidas. Oh, for real? They got yeah. some working with Adidas on the right. works. Okay. So they did get Adidas popping, so it makes sense. Yeah. So when I saw them, when I went around there, I saw them. Um, I met them, introduced myself, gave them cards. Mm -hmm. I told them I had a juice bar around the corner. Yeah. So they did a little shout out. So they yeah, did a they promo. Said, oh, we're gonna come stop by. I actually came by, um, got them a drink, and gave me a little promo afterwards. Mm -hmm. um, actually, he did the promo before I gave him a drink. Um, it's showing love to yeah, Queens. showing love, you know what I mean? Um, but the manager actually comes here all the time. You know what I mean? Oh, um, run DMC manager? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Show them that painting, yeah. Oh, uh -oh. oh you good. Ah, oh, there we go. So, um... So they, they bring this to you, or...? Yeah, after that, they brought this to me. Run what? DMC and the manager brought this to me. Where Reverend Run and the manager brought this to me. Let me know this when it's... picture right here. Oh, that's fire. You know what I'm saying? Nah, this is dope. This is dope. This is one of a kind. This, I, ain't, I ain't never seen this nowhere. Yeah. Nah, this is dope. Hang this up in the shop. It's gonna make the hood proud, bro. Right. This is this is this is major. So, um, they brought this picture, which was I felt like was very historical. I sh that probably gave you a lot of like, it gave you more motivation. I feel like, look, you know what I'm saying. You've been here for less than a year, and you getting this, and you getting all this support, 
and not only from your neighborhood, but from idols that started, that's from out from outside of town that's doing major things. And they came right. back, show love, not only to your store, but also gave you a, a painting that to remember and hang up. Right. So that, that must've been a great experience. Yes, it was. So I mean, as a business owner, so as a business owner under 30, um, dealt with all the trials, tribulations, and managed to do what you're doing. How would you say you manage your life? Because, you know, as a, as a young man under 30, you still want to have fun. You still want to enjoy your life. You know, you, you work hard to play hard. So how do you balance out? What's a typical week like for you? Um, work, shop for work, and go home and sleep. There's really no time to play. Well, um, even today, like I know you had to, you were supposed to be closed. You yeah, opened up just for closed. us, you know, you opened up just for us to do this interview. Appreciate him for that. That's major. On Columbus Day, running around, making errands for the shop. But I still, still made have to shop, get things ready for the next day. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm still also a new shop where I'm still learning. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, we was talking earlier off cam um, about the fruit situation right. right now. Like, for an example, right now, um, fruits, mangoes strawberries you know it's not the season for those fruits to grow first california got a lot of um fires going on yeah. with strawberries is like 30 dollars and more a case mm -hmm. we can't even go into stores and find strawberries right now it's an inflation um, of all all mangoes. type of fruit mangoes that's why and like i was telling them that's why i realized a lot of big corporations use frozen fruit mm -hmm. because they always gonna have frozen fruit. Always. Yeah, they can store it. You don't gotta worry about it going bad. It. You ain't gotta worry about it going bad. That's the main thing with fruit. You know, you have it, but it goes bad it goes within bad. a week. You know what I'm saying? Fast. If you're not catering to it right. right. So having a juice bar, if you're not really seeing the same customers you were seeing in the summertime, mm -hmm. that could take a toll on business. So by freezing some fruit, it saves you money in the long run. As that's a business owner, you're starting to learn that. Right. That's, that's, I mean, that's, that's a live and learn experience. You know, it's your first year, first winter open. Mm -hmm. So you're going to learn season by season what is going to work for you and what yeah. doesn't. And that's, and, that's, and that's the part of owning a business that makes you know. A lot of people going to learn that when they open a business. A lot of people think you open a business, it's easy, you know, you know everything. You're going to learn. You're going to learn a lot while you You're going to learn a lot, but it's not easy. It's not easy. You're going to have stressful ass days, and it's going to be like, yo, do I really want this for myself? And then you're going to be like, you know what? It's I'm, not just, see, a lot of people think it's just, Paying the bills. Mm -hmm. You gotta pay to empty your garbage. Yeah, you gotta pay everything. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. You have to pay for your lights, your water, your rent. Like your crib. Like when you live at, you gotta pay everything here, but more. But more. Yeah, more expensive. It's like I could tell you nine different overheads before you even get to your food, your workers. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, it's a bunch of other things you got to worry about. A whole bunch of things. And I'm sure with the whole COVID, you know, pr um, process, you know, procedures in play, it's made it a lot difficult. But you, like I said, you can't even prepare. You got the whole sanitizer thing on deck. Yes, you got everything, did. everybody coming in with masks and staying, you know, sanitized and safe, which is which is good, you know. Right. A lot of people feel like because you're black owned, we don't know how to follow procedures or know how to operate properly, but you seem to have been doing a well job yes. at it. So congrats to that and keep doing Thank your thing. Cause a lot of people take it as a joke, you know what I'm saying? But you own your shit. So keep doing that. Now I have a segment of questions I, I, you know, I'm trying to bring to the show and just ask certain things that, that's entrepreneurship related. So I got three, three questions real quick. So in terms of if you could go back in time, I feel like every entrepreneur has a situation where they think they, they would want to go back in time and, or no regrets, but just want to change. What would you say you would change if you could go back in time? I don't think nothing. Nothing. You think like everything think, is everything um, happens for a reason. Everything happens for a yeah, reason. Yeah, that's something my mom would buy. You know what I'm saying? Everything does happen for a reason. And like, yo, you want to crack this? Want... Yes, definitely we can. You know what I'm saying? We I want to definitely feel crack like, this open. Um, everybody's dealt their own cards. Yeah. Um, and if everybody was Jay Z. Um, Barack Obama, George Bush, Donald Trump. How would it be anybody else? If everybody was rich, or if everybody was powerful, yeah, how would the world how would, wouldn't stand right? Yeah, it's always going to be mean? this. This the world. I mean, especially America is set up on a hierarchy. Everything is set up to where certain people going 
It's gonna be the rich, it's gonna be the poor, it's gonna be the middle class. And that's just the way society is set up for us especially. But you know, for us is to break the barrier and do something outside of the norm, you know what I'm saying? We got a lot of obstacles as black men in America that we gotta deal with on the regular. So we gotta be prominent and step outside the box and do what we gotta do to not only survive for ourselves, but for our people. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like you say, you like to help people. So by this, you put, you letting people know, and not only in your, in your, in your, where you grew up at, but you letting people, other people outside that don't even know you, they come uh -huh. here, they see a black owner. Uh -huh. That's not in this neighborhood. They don't see that. And one other thing I, I like to ask a lot of my business owners is, if somebody came in here, you know how hard you work to get where you are. If somebody came here and said, yo, I like your bar, I like what it's doing, I want to offer you X amount of money, and you give it to me. Would you, are you, gonna, would you sell your business? No. Not at all? No. $10 I mean, million, dollars, they not, you not. Yeah, I might. <laughs> yeah. Money too, yeah, you can flip it and do something yeah. else, right? Um, and also, I've learned that there's ways you can go about that. You know what I mean? Um, and that's what us being from the hood, being black, that's where we mess up at. Mm -hmm. Like we, if you Google any business, no business made it by itself. No one, nah, it's you know what I mean? um, It's called investors, partners. Mm -hmm. That's what you want to grow. So you would take that route. Somebody came to you like, oh, you know, I want to offer you this amount, but like, can we work on a partnership? Can we work right. on a, a way to work together? I would take, I, 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 I would try that. to take 10 million with 10% of the business. So you can invest you know I mean? probably into other things. I would try to take five million with 20% of the business. Mm -hmm. He'd take 80. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? There's different ways. Yeah, you, you work out that. of your contract. You negotiate stuff like that. If somebody want to take percentage of your, of your business, you negotiate what exactly you're going to be doing, what they're going to be doing, and, and, and so on and so on. So mm -hmm. that makes sense. All right, that's a respectable answer. Just because I know like a lot of black people in specific like they get a bag thrown to them they giving up something they created then the white man going run around with it and then right. it's no longer your business like i even see a logo is it who's this on the, on the logo who's this on the logo i saw you had your means in the this front one, yeah. oh yeah yeah so who's that who's that that represents your logo um that's actually my friend mm -hmm. um my first friend that died sorry to hear that um he's dead because I feel like that's what brought me and my friends, us together. Mm -hmm. And without that, I wouldn't have this. I'm without your losses, you won't have your wins. That's where right. it come from. That's what's up. Nah, and make him remember, make him a uh, memory of him by with your business. That's 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 a right. blessing. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure his family appreciates you for that, and all your homies yes. do as well. All right, so. Uh, and one thing, uh, another question I have: If you, if you have, if or when you have a child, would you push them to go to college after high school? Yes, of course. You would push them to go to college. All knowledge is good knowledge. I, I respect that. I mean, I think, I mean, because I did school and I'm outside of school and I see the difference. I think it depends on what you're going to school for. You know what I'm saying? You have to have an end plan because I went to school for like public relations and international business. I learned things, but I feel like what I, what I ultimately gained from school is the people I met. You know what I'm saying? I was able to network outside of school to give me better opportunities. That's the only mm -hmm. thing I, I felt like I learned. Unless you're going to school to be a doctor, a lawyer, I really don't feel like you, because you could, on your computer now, you can learn, you can self-teach yourself, d discipline. Like you said, you taught yourself to learn everything to do to, to open a business. You know what I'm saying? You, you took the steps to research what a juice bar actually is, what you need to actually have a juice bar. So I think that's what a lot of people need to understand when, if I have True, kids. But also, um, it takes, like courage takes heart. Yeah. To actually open up a business, though. That's a fact. One hundred percent. And if a risk factor, and when you do go to school, say if you went to school for business, mm -hmm. they'll probably teach you a lot of things that I don't know. So when yeah. they see it, see like me, I would have to see it and go through it to mm -hmm. know. To know, I get what you know you're what saying. I mean? They might see it and know it before they even get there. Yeah, I, I you know get what you're saying? saying. I feel like schools may have the insight before we get the insight. You right. know, the normal people that's not at least the a little bit of it. Yeah, a little bit. I, I think know. it does give you a better advantage when you go to school. No, school is not bad. Yeah, I don't. I don't think it's bad. I just think it's a it's a, a becoming an industry that's taking so much money. Cause I went to school. I mean, you know, when you come out of school, you pay so much money in, in loans. Mm -hmm. You start off in debt. So with that in mind, you got to keep and play like, what I'm going to school for is it going to make me the money I'm going to school to put myself in debt. That's the thing I, I want everybody to know because you could go to school. If you go to school and do what you're supposed to do, you can go for free. That, that is true. You get a scholarship, you don't you know got to pay shit. That but, is true. That is true. I mean, it's either that or you just do what I did. You could just jump out the window and try. Yeah, take the hopefully risk. Hopefully it works. Yeah, and you put all your eggs in one basket and hopefully that shit, that shit hatches okay. for you. 
And like my main objective is trying to find an um, investor as soon as possible. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Investors, how at him? You know, so you trying to expand right. it? Like it's your goal to expand the business. Course. Of course. Just have a bunch of different bar, ju Not to juice have bars around. One right here, no, I'm gonna have a juice bar in a two mile radius of each one. So you're trying to do like Every the Starbucks. You're trying yes. to be the Starbucks of juice bars. I'm trying to be McDonald's. <laughs> McDonald's, that's everywhere. That's a franchise. I'm you can't go Every nowhere. Miles, I'm trying to be a gas station. That's what's up. That's big. That's, that's, that's very ambitious. But I feel like with the work you put in already, you could already speak for that. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? I feel like that shit is going to take you to the next level just to keep grinding. Right. You know what I'm saying? You waking up like I worked for somebody once I came on school, I worked for other people. And sometimes I w woke up dreading my job, bro. Like, I used to wake up, I'd be like, yo, I got to go talk to these people. I don't really talk to them. They don't know my lifestyle. They don't know mm -hmm. how I live. They don't know what my day-to-day -day is. But I got to put fake the funk, you know what I'm saying? So the fact that you get to open your own establishment, I'm sure you don't wake up with days where I'm like, fuck this shit, you know what I'm saying? I'm sure you may wake up with, you know what I'm saying? No, 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 no. Don't get me wrong. I always wake up with <laughs> right? um, But at least you got to fake the funk, you know what I'm saying? You got to be around people that yes, I don't relate to. of course. To. But... I mean, I do. I have employees, and I still work with you know them. I mean, I still make smoothies. I still make wraps. You're an owner that and works with his work with employees. You know what I mean? Just sit so behind his life, probably do the thing. I can't. still have a lot of things, a lot of food to present to the world. Mm. You know what I mean? Like um, turkey burgers, I didn't even bring out. Mm. Salmon burgers, I didn't even. That's bring the healthier out. lifestyle. You know what I mean? Um, so health is well for you. I feel like health is like a main thing. I feel like you really learned like health is. Yes, I'm gonna have the best of health, but I'm gonna have, like for an example, you might see the exotic pop behind me. Mm. Um, I'm gonna have the exotic pop too. I'm gonna cater to everybody. You for know the what kids, I mean? Kids, for, for everybody. Um, kids, uh. older people come here and be healthy. You could come here and have some sugar. <laughs> have a little you bit of everything. You could have a little bit of everything. Just it's more so of to come here and be happy. Smile when you walk through these doors. Yeah, you know? that's what's up. And I, and I came here. I cop some. I cop the smoothie from you right. a while back. Shit's hitting. Like I had. I think I forgot which one I had. I think I had the. Uh, I think the Hulk. Mm -hmm. That shit was. That shit was hitting. That yeah. shit was hitting. That's a banana, um, spinach, protein, oats. Yeah. So one thing I'm gonna do for my for my viewers and whoever is and whoever wants to come to Bar Juice Bar Guy Juice, I'm gonna buy a smoothie off the menu for anything y'all want. You know, comments, like, subscribe. I'm gonna buy a smoothie on me. We gonna make sure y'all come try out his smoothies here and try yeah. these shots too. After DJ, if you gonna chill with your lady later, or you know what I'm saying, you definitely wanna try one of these because this. And I also this provide a free immune booster shot. Oh, free immune booster shot, you know, we coming up with flu season. Ginger, you know stay, might be stay healthy. Grass, it might be ginger and wheat grass. You got everything. Anything. Supply for the health. <laughs> and my last question for the, one of my this last segment is in terms of they say entrepreneurs have five skills. They say they're research, focus, cash management, and communi communication and learning. Out of those five skills, what do you think is your strongest skill as an entrepreneur? Um, probably communication. Communication. All right, that's, 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 I think that's one of the most important, to be honest. Right. If you don't communicate, you can't get, your, you can't get things yeah, done, you know what I'm saying? All. So you say communicate. Why, I'm, I'm speaking for myself, but why would you say communication is your um, strong suit? Because, like I said, again, I like people. Mm -hmm. I like to help people. So I like to talk. I like to hear people. Um, that's another thing why I like the juice bar, because... You can hear different opinions from people, what people like, mm. what they feel is good for their body. Got you, got you. Because um, everybody, now what works for you may work for somebody else. Right. It depends on your body. Um, Things like that, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So it's always a good time to have a good conversation. Communicate. Now, that's dope. All right, now, that's for real. And I mean, in terms of inspiring, like my goal when people see this is to inspire them to, you know, do what you've done, to overcome things, go out there and start their business, take the risk. In terms of advice what advice would you give to someone who may have took the who, who may have went down the wrong path when they were young like we all made dumb mistakes and they trying to come out and trying to figure out a different route than the typical you know be a rapper or or you know sell drugs what, what would you say is you know what i'm saying um is the first the thing i say advice? is what i learned from juvenile mm -hmm. um have a schedule make a schedule make a plan mm -hmm. a day-to-day -day plan um, wake up, brush your teeth, eat breakfast, put on your clothes, um, take a shower, however you do it, mm -hmm. you know, make a plan and start that every day. 
Man that's I mean? a plan. Having a plan, having having it actually laid out is like is ideal. You know what I'm saying? Try that every day. Mm-hmm. And then sit, think, and figure out what you want to do. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And if you make that plan, something will pop up on what Got you, you. want to do. It's something that comes to fruition. Yeah, figure out the time you have. Mm-hmm. If you have too much time, not enough time. Yeah. And whatever you want to do, just do it. You know That's a fact. We don't live, we're not from a world where we got businesses passed down to us, um, things like that. So we have money, if we could get money, if we could get loans, mm-hmm. if we could get grants, whatever mm-hmm. it is, get it, try it. And depending on how young you are, you could do it again. Yeah. Because um, you live and learn, like you said. You live and learn as you're as, as you doing this. It's just you got to just be willing to do it. That's a fact. I mean, I think that's I think that's best said. And I mean, would you say is uh, another business venture? Would you have, do you have another business venture outside the juice bar that you want to deal with or get involved in? Um, besides the real estate? Yeah. I mean, not even the real estate. You could elaborate um, on that a little that, bit more. But I'm not really focused on nothing else right now. Just I'm to really straight, just getting your business up. My business, mm-hmm. um, this juice ball, making sure I have everything, learning. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just it's a lot with business. That's why you know what I mean. Yeah, you, just can't, you just can't open up a business. You take know what I'm time. Is, like, I've met a mentor. Mm-hmm. Um, his name is Eric. Okay. Um, and he was teaching me a lot of things. Yeah. You know what I mean, he's a big white guy from Long Island. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying he came yeah. in here, and that's the way he said it to me. Well, he just came in your shop and he's like, "Yo, I like what, what you're doing. Let's let's talk." No, not like that. I, I met him from my cousin. Oh, okay, mutual I mean, friend. That's my cousin. I, I got you. Mm-hmm. So, but when he came in here, he was just like he was just showing me certain things, um, things that us black businesses do. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? that he told me like yo listen don't do this don't do that you know what i mean when okay. you walk in a place you're not supposed to see this you're not supposed to see that mm-hmm. i mean not i'm not gonna say all black businesses do that yeah, yeah. but it's a lot of things that we do lacking he just you know give you I mean? game you know he just giving me game mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying and then he said it like this i mean maybe over here in your neighborhood where you at it's, it's okay yeah i'm just a big white guy from Way out in Long Island. Yeah, that's just coming. You know what I mean? Uh huh. Multi millionaire. And you never know what I could do. You know what I'm saying he made his first million when he was 26. You know what I'm saying? That's. T- hey, can't you? He's doing something right, clearly. You know what I'm saying? But, um, other than that, like, he was te- teaching me and he was telling me, like, mm-hmm. you gotta learn numbers when it comes to business. Oh, yeah, yeah. Every- numbers is I'm everything. About, right? Even down to. In a two mile radius of your store. You gotta know what competition is around. The competition, Mm -hmm. how many people you have. Mm -hmm. Like for an example, if you have, I'm a juice ball here. If I have three more juice balls in a two mile radius of where I'm at, I gotta figure out a way to find out how many people. They bring in. No, how many people live in a community. Oh, gives you got to scope out the area. If I have 300 people live in a community Mm -hmm. and it's three juice bars and 200 people going to, no, 100 people going to juice bar A. Mm-hmm. And never 100 people going to juice bar B. Mm-hmm. Or 190 people going to juice bar B. And then mm-hmm. only 10 ju- people going to mine. Mm-hmm. You got to figure out how to get all the, of those people to come to mine. Yeah. That's, that's, that's when the, you know the marketing saying? and all that come to play. That's the marketing come to play. The numbers come to play. Mm-hmm. You got to know the stuff that you're buying. Mm-hmm. You gotta know the way to compete. You guys is like yeah. everything. You gotta know the way to compete. You gotta have a game plan. It's hard. And it's especially the first year, you learning as you trying to game plan. It's like, yo, I thought this would work, but damn, that ain't work. I gotta, work. gotta scratch that. I gotta start somewhere yeah, else. Do something else. And that's really what it is. It's like you gotta, you gotta, it's a live and learn, and then you gotta try. You gotta give yourself. You're gonna take out. You're gonna take some losses when you open that's a business. True. Like that's true. you open some, you get fresh fruit. Your fresh fruit don't sell. You, then you got you got a fruit, bro, and it's like that's money coming out of your pocket, yep. and that's learning. You know what I'm saying? As as you go on, just take but your lessons. Also, in business, that's when you got to figure out. You got to calculate that in, right? Got to calculate losses. that in. And also, you got to figure out. I have fruit that I know could go bad. How else can I sell them? Can mm-hmm. I make them into juice? 
can I put them in a salad bowl? Mm. Sell it as a um, Aki bowl or something like that. Aki acai bowl. I see. Um, that's what it is. A fruit bowl. Mm. Things like that. You just gotta learn different ways to sell your fruit. Copy, copy. So in terms, so since you opened up this business, what is one of the one of the biggest things you've learned since being a business owner? Numbers. Numbers. Numbers is the game of the game. Cause you got that's where you put your money in. Everything is numbers. Everything you do when it comes to this mm. is numbers. Numbers and reading. Um, and when I say that, reading. He said reading. I want. I want you to emphasize reading. Reading is very important. Very, very, very important. important. If you don't just read. get something, you can't open a business, get something, an email, and just be like, oh, whatever. I will read it later. Yeah, you that's, have to read that. Exactly. That's your business. That's what, you know what people I mean? want to see. You have to read. You have to read, 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 mm-hmm. read everything. Once you read everything, mm-hmm. once you read everything, everything else will be better off. It'll be easier, a little bit easier. Yeah, because you know what to expect, and you could plan for shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, when we in school, they tell us to read these books, blah, blah, blah. you like, I don't want to read these shit. This shit ain't doing nothing for me. Mm-hmm. But when you got a business, and this is something that pertains to your business, you should read every single line that is pertaining to your business because yes. it's yours. You know what I'm saying? Ain't no reason to just bypass them. You don't care about it if you just bypass them mm-hmm. and shit. So I think that's major. Yep. Um, and one other thing I want to ask is how can people support your business? Um, um, how can people support your business? Um, what you mean how people can support? Like how can people support bar? Like how can people say, yo, this juice bar is where it's at? You know, how can people be like, yo, I want you should go to this juice bar? Like my 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 guy producer over here ish. He came and he's like, yo, this is dope. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's a nice spot. How can people continue? How can you push your movement to be the Starbucks uh, or the McDonald's of the juice game? Um, keep providing what I provide. Um, a nice place, a good time, mm-hmm. smile on your face when you walk through the doors, um, a good smoothie, mm-hmm. um, good food, um, seasoned food. Just good, just good vibes all around. Good vibes, um, good shots. <laughs> Definitely good shots. I'm feeling um, right. And that's how people can support it. you. Just come through, show love, uh, follow the through. social media. Which is, which, let the people know your social media account. And everything. Ball got juice mm-hmm. on Facebook, Instagram, and, and you, Twitter. Mm-hmm. Um, and you located. And you got Instagram. Got you, got you. Um, that's even my email if you need to get in contact. <laughs> and uh, your location, where you at in uh, Queens? 411 Hollow 7. Right on Run DMC block, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, come through, support my homie, Bar Got Juice. He's doing great things here. Um, follow him on social media. Come come through, get a smoothie. Like I said, a smoothie on me. So like, comment, subscribe, and I got you with a smoothie of your choice. And make sure you come support black businesses, man. Real talk. I appreciate you from coming out. But Bar, appreciate you. Appreciate and we're going to keep boy. working, bro. Stay tuned.